Have you ever been curious about just what the heck is happening when satellites are in orbit? Well, you've come to the right place because it's time for Asked and Answered, and I will tackle your frequently asked questions about satellite orbits. What is a satellite? This is a good place to start. So a satellite is actually a generic term for an object that is in orbit around a larger object. So this can actually be an artificial or a natural satellite, but in casual speech, we usually just call natural satellites moons, and we use the word satellite just to refer to artificial satellites. So for this video, I'll be using the word satellite just to mean artificial satellites. How do satellite orbits work? Why don't satellites fall? Gravity. This is a little confusing because gravity is also the reason that things do fall to the Earth, so why is it the reason that satellites don't? The key is in the velocity of the satellite, or the speed and direction in which it's moving. Gravity is acting to pull the satellite towards the center of the central object. Let's just call it the Earth to make things simple. But if the satellite is moving fast enough perpendicular to that pull of gravity, then the change in direction that's caused by the pull of gravity basically just keeps that velocity always perpendicular to the pull. It's actually like the satellite is perpetually falling, it's just moving too fast to ever actually hit the Earth. Do satellites orbit forever? Nope, they do not. Um, so if you just had a kind of idealized circumstance of a point mass in orbit around a single body, then yes, it could be in orbit forever. But alas, real life is never quite so simple. <laughs> if there is any force acting on the satellite that removes energy from the satellite's orbit, that causes the orbit to decay and it'll eventually hit the surface of the Earth. Now for satellites in orbit around the Earth, this force will usually be atmospheric drag. Yes, even at very high altitudes where satellites orbit, there are at least a few gas molecules of the Earth's atmosphere. This air causes drag, which reduces the orbital energy of the satellite, which causes it to lower its orbit, which means that there's going to be more air for it to hit, which means more drag, which means it's going to decay the orbit more and get even lower. It's a positive feedback loop that can eventually either cause the satellite to hit the surface of the Earth or more likely to break up and burn up in the atmosphere. For this reason, satellites usually use small onboard boosters to offset orbital decay and maintain their orbits. Now, just how long it takes an orbit to decay depends on the properties of the satellite, as well as the height of its initial orbit, and actually the activity from the sun. <laughs> satellites orbit at what height? So satellites can really orbit at any height, but there are generally kind of three main classes, or four depending on how you think of it. Also, keep in mind that the height or altitude of a satellite is a little bit of a fuzzy notion because the Earth is not a perfect sphere and the satellite's height can vary over the course of its orbit. So first we have low Earth orbit, and this is for satellites that orbit between about 160 and 1,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. The Guinness World Record for the lowest altitude by an Earth-observing satellite in orbit is held by JAXA for a satellite that orbited at 167.4 kilometers. So 160 kilometers is very low for a satellite orbit, but it's actually still very high. For contrast, passenger airlines usually cruise at about 10 kilometers, so we're still talking upper, upper atmosphere. Because low Earth orbit is closest to the Earth, it requires the least amount of energy to place a satellite in this region, and in fact, the majority of satellites around the Earth are in low Earth orbit. Then there is medium Earth orbit, which is an orbit between 1,000 kilometers and 35,786 kilometers. Basically, it's anything above low Earth orbit, but below a geosynchronous orbit, which happens at exactly 35,786 kilometers, which is why we get such a weird number as the boundary here. Medium Earth orbits are commonly used by navigation satellites. So then, you probably guessed it, we have high Earth orbit, and this is any orbit that's above 35,786 kilometers. This is not a common orbit type because it takes a lot of energy to place satellites in this orbit, but there are a few satellites that orbit here. So this height of exactly 35,786 kilometers is the altitude at which a satellite has an orbital period of 24 hours. So this is why it's called geosynchronous, so you can kind of think of this as a fourth class of orbits, geosynchronous orbits. Now, if a geosynchronous orbit is also completely circular and aligned to the Earth's equator, then it's what's called a geostationary orbit, which means it's basically always above the same spot on Earth. And this is very commonly used for communication satellites. Do all satellites orbit the same direction? No, but most of them do. <laughs> satellites that orbit in the same direction that the Earth is spinning are called prograde orbits, and this is what most satellites have. It's actually harder to place a satellite into a retrograde orbit, which is when the orbit is opposite the spin's direction of the Earth, because you have to work against that rotational velocity that you have at launch from the Earth's spin. So there are only a handful of satellites that have a kind of 
true retrograde orbit where it's almost completely backwards to the rest of the satellites. However, there is one type of more common orbit that is actually slightly retrograde, and this is called a sun synchronous orbit. It's basically a polar orbit, so it's orbiting around the poles rather than around the equator, but it is slightly retrograde, and it's called sun synchronous because basically as the satellite passes over the same spot, the illumination angle from the sun will be the same, and this can be really helpful for imaging and things. So Earth observation satellites tend to use these sun synchronous orbits, which are just slightly retrograde. <laughs> Are satellite orbits circular or elliptical? They can be either. Well, actually, technically speaking, a circle is just a form of an ellipse, but I, I know what you mean here. So, <laughs> Are they fully circular or do they have some eccentricity? So circular orbits have an eccentricity of zero. In fact, to get exactly equal to zero, because again, this is real life and it doesn't like to cooperate, is pretty difficult, but we'll say anything very, very near to zero for eccentricity is a circular orbit. Whereas these elliptical orbits have eccentricities greater than zero, but less than one. So probably most satellites generally tend to have pretty circular orbits. There are some orbit types that really require a circular orbit, like geostationary orbits or sun synchronous orbits. And it actually requires less energy to place a satellite into a circular orbit than at an elliptical orbit for the same average altitude. So generally speaking, usually going to go with a circular orbit. But sometimes, depending on the satellite's purpose, having a high eccentricity can be very useful, and so it's worth it to place the satellite onto these elliptical orbits. For example, because satellites move more slowly at apogee, or when they're farthest away from the Earth, you can use this if you want to keep a satellite kind of in the same region of the sky for a longer portion of its orbit, because it will move very quickly through its perigee and kind of hang at apogee. So for some communication satellites, this can be really helpful because it keeps the satellite in view longer. What is the inclination of a satellite? So the inclination is a measure of how tilted the orbit is relative to the Earth's equator. So geostationary orbits, which like I mentioned are a certain type of geosynchronous orbits, have to orbit around the equator, so they have an inclination that's equal to zero. Whereas a polar orbit that goes directly around the poles would have an inclination of 90 degrees. By convention, inclinations greater than 90 degrees mean that the satellite is orbiting retrograde. So an inclination of 180 degrees would be a satellite that's orbiting directly above the equator, but retrograde. And I mentioned those sun-synchronous polar orbits that are slightly retrograde. They have an inclination of 98 degrees, so you can see they're just slightly retrograde past the polar or orbit. What is the orbital velocity slash speed of a satellite? So this is basically just the velocity that it needs to have in order to keep itself from falling back to Earth to maintain that orbit that we talked about. I should mention that velocity and speed are slightly different, so velocity is a vector that is it has both a magnitude and a direction, and the magnitude of the velocity vector is the speed. So it is important because the velocity has to be in a perpendicular direction in order for the satellite to be in orbit. If it had the right orbital speed, but that speed was pointed towards the Earth, then you wouldn't get in orbit. So for a circular orbit, the orbital velocity is constant throughout the orbit, but for an eccentric or elliptical orbit, this actually changes throughout the orbit. So it travels faster at perigee and slower at apogee, which is when it's close to the Earth and far from the Earth. Because satellite masses are very small compared to the mass of the Earth, we can actually approximate the circular orbital velocity by this equation, the square root of gm over r, where r is the distance from the center of the Earth, g is the universal gravitational constant, and m is the mass of the Earth. What this means, since the r here is in the denominator, is that as you get higher, or you get farther away from the center of the Earth, the orbital velocity is actually slower. This is a little bit counterintuitive, and it actually leads to some interesting effects if you're trying to change your orbital altitude. How are satellites launched? They're launched on board rockets. Now, if you've ever seen footage of a rocket launch, you'll probably notice that it goes straight up off the launch pad, which is not exactly consistent with what I've said about orbits. This is because close to the Earth, the atmosphere is very dense. So you kind of just want to take the shortest path through that, which is going to be going straight up. But once you get up into some of the thinner parts of the atmosphere, then the rockets will usually start to angle themselves, usually heading towards the east to take advantage of the Earth's spin. This is why launch sites are very often located on east coasts and closer to the equator because there's higher rotational velocity, so you get more of a boost from the Earth's spin. Now, eventually, when the rocket is high enough, it will turn basically completely sideways and release the satellite. And the satellite, because of inertia, will maintain that velocity that it got from the rocket. Now, from there, usually the satellite has to use some sort of onboard thrusters to get it placed into the exactly desired orbit. How many satellites does Earth have? As of September 1st, 2021, according to the Union of Concerned Scientists, there are 4,550 operating satellites in orbit around the Earth. This does not include defunct satellites or space debris, of which there is thousands. You can check out stuffin.space for a very cool visualization to help you picture what this looks like, and I'll leave the link for that down below. What satellites orbit other planets? 
Ooh, this is a good question. Earth is not the only planet that has artificial satellites in our solar system. So Mercury has none at the moment, but Bepi Colombo is on its way there and should be in orbit around Mercury by December 2025. Venus currently has one active satellite, JAXA's Akatsuki Venus Climate Orbiter. Mars has eight. We like Mars. <laughs> NASA's 2001 Mars Odyssey, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, and MAVEN. ESA's Mars Express and ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter with Roscosmos. India's Mars Orbiter Mission, UAE's Hope Orbiter, and China's Tianwen-1. Now in the outer solar system, there's only currently one active satellite, and that is NASA's Juno probe, which is in orbit around Jupiter. And of course, it's not a planet, but our own moon does have a few of its own artificial satellites. There are currently four active, NASA's Artemis P1 and P2, and the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, and India's Chandrayaan-2. So hopefully that helps with all your burning questions about satellite orbits. If you have more questions, or if you want to suggest a topic for Asked and Answered, please feel free. Go ahead in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you will join us again next time. Have a good one. Bye!